Okay, uh, my name is Maryam Shakiba or Dr. Shakiba, and I'm an assistant professor in the civil engineering department. And I am in the structural engineering and materials group. Uh, I joined Virginia Tech in 2017. And before that, I got my PhD from Texas A&M University. And then I was a postdoc at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, and I am working on modeling of different material. In my group, we are trying to develop a mathematical model, theoretical model, and then write the computer code to predict how different material basically breaks. So then we can design our structure. So basically, what is the capacity of different material, different composites, when they break, when we see cracks in them under different condition of because we have mechanical load in addition to mechanical loads, we have other loads that we will talk a little bit about them today. Okay, so now just sort of a uh, both uh, icebreaker and also I know you guys a little bit. So let's uh, start, I'll uh, uh, call your name and then introduce a little bit uh, yourself, talk about yourself and what engineering are you interested, what do you like to do? Okay, and anything else that you want to talk about. Okay. Uh, Abigail? And you should uh, unmute yourself and then talk. Hi, I'm Abby. I'm from Virginia, but right now I'm living in Hungary. And the types of engineering that I'm interested in are like a couple, something about mechanical, electrical, and maybe computer science. Nice. Cool. Uh, so this one, you have your name all connected, Adi, Adi Mark. Yeah, I'm Addie. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a rising junior, and I live in Annapolis, Maryland, and I'm interested in civil engineering. Cool, nice. Uh, Ali? Um, hi, I'm Ali. Um, I'm a rising senior, and I'm from Manassas, Virginia, and I'm interested in biomedical or biological systems engineering. Cool, nice. Uh, generally, excuse me if I pronounce your names uh, wrong, feel free to correct me, okay? Uh, Grace. Hi, I'm Grace and I'm from McLean, Virginia, and I'm interested in biomedical engineering. Okay, you have two biomedical so far. Uh, or biological and then similar. Jada or Yada, which one? Jada. Jada. Okay. Hi, I'm Jada. I'm from Bristol, Virginia, and I'm interested in civil engineering and environmental engineering. Civil engineering and environment. Nice. Oh, I remember you. Okay. You were at the launch. Uh, Jolene? Hi, I'm Jolene. I'm a rising senior, and I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And I'm interested in aerospace engineering and chemical engineering. Different. Yeah. <laughs> Karina? Hi, I'm Karina. I'm from Potomac, Maryland, and I'm interested in civil engineering. Oh. Oh, the least. Okay, Chris, Kristen? Hi, I'm Kirsten. I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. Um, I'm a rising senior and I'm interested in biomedical and biological. Okay. Marliana. Hi, I'm Marliana. I'm from Loudoun County, Virginia. And before coming to this camp, I was only interested in biomedical, but now after hearing more about um, the different types of engineering I'm interested in civil and maybe even construction engineering. Okay, nice. So good that we were kind of successful. <laughs> also, um, I have to help my mom take my two dogs to the vet, so I will be switching to the car soon. It's okay. Okay. 
Uh, Mimi? Yeah, um, I'm Mimi. I'm from Richmond, um, and I'm most interested in biomed, um, but I'm not really sure. We have a lot of biomeds. Okay. It's a cool engineering. Uh, Maya? Hi, I'm Maya. I'm from Springfield, Virginia. I'm a rising junior, and I'm interested in aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering. Oh, I forgot to say that one of my postdoc was in air, uh, my postdoc one year I was in aerospace engineering at the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign that I talked about. I was at the aerospace engineering department. Uh, where were we? R Rishika? Hi, I'm Rishika. I'm from Chantilly, Virginia. I'm a rising senior and I'm interested in. Computer science. Computer science. So you like to write codes? Yeah. Do you like to design games or what do you want to do? Um, I'm not really sure yet, but I want to do something in the coding field because I, I enjoy it. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Shannon. Hi, I'm Shannon. I'm from Stewart, Florida. I'm a rising junior and I'm interested in aerospace, mechanical, and civil engineering. Nice. And they all have a lot of overlap, so yeah. Uh, Sonia. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm from Loudoun County, Virginia. And um, I think I'm, so I know I'm interested in computer science and right now I'm deciding between um, either aerospace or mechanical. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Sydney? Um, I'm Sydney. I'm a rising senior. Um, I go to Edison High School and I live in like Alexandria. Um, I'm interested in mechanical engineering. Cool. Tess? Hi, I'm Tess. I'm from Springfield, Virginia. I'm a rising junior and I'm interested in aerospace engineering. Aerospace engineering. Okay. Uh, is there anyone left or did I went to the whole list? And raise your hand if you haven't talked. Okay. So we had all sorts of uh, like engineering. Uh, cool. Let's start uh, with watching a video about civil engineering. And then I will talk about a little bit the general civil engineering. Then I will talk about my own division, which is a structural engineering and materials. But feel free to ask questions about anything. I'll try to, I'll try my best to answer. Okay. For more than 160 years, the American Society of Civil Engineers has been at the forefront of the civil engineering profession. ASCE is the voice of the collaborative efforts of more than 140,000 passionate and committed civil engineers whose mission is clear to protect the health, safety and welfare of our public's future by continuing to advance the profession. Policymakers need um, accurate and uh, truthful information. One of the most important is the report card put out by ASCE. One of the unique things that ASCE has done is established or developed a body of knowledge, which is essentially a standard for what civil engineers need to know in order to be successful as practicing civil engineers in the 21st century. Sustainable infrastructure is about people when we look at how does this project benefit, not only the economic bottom line, but also how does it help people and how does it help improve the environment. ASCE, serving our members, bettering our communities, improving our way of life. This one is... Civil engineering is everywhere. It's in every road you drive. It's in the clean water you drink. It's where you live, work, and play. It really is all around you. Civil engineers help improve the lives of millions of people every day. We're going to meet three civil engineers and look at some of the real ways that they're helping communities right now. 
America's waterway system is home to an entire ecosystem. The animals that live in the water depend on us to keep their communities clean. This is James Wannaberg. James is working to create a healthy habitat and ecosystem in Washington, D.C.'s Potomac River. He's a resident engineer for the Blue Plains Tunnel, part of the D.C. Clean Rivers Project. This tunnel project is using a massive drill that's almost 30 feet high and over 400 feet long. This is my office. We're, uh, we're here for D.C. Water, working on the Clean Rivers Project. This project is, uh, is intended to eliminate sewer overflows into the D.C. waterways, uh, which ultimately go down to the Chesapeake Bay. So we're cleaning up the rivers. Uh, right now we're working on a deep tunnel. It's called the Blue Plains Tunnel. And uh, this is going to capture stormwater underground and allow that to be treated later after a big rain event. Uh, the tunnel boring machine we're using here is an amazing piece of equipment. It's, it's fantastic. It's a 26 foot diameter uh, and it uh, bores horizontally underground uh, like a drill. And uh, it holds back all of the earth pressures and the hydrostatic forces that are below ground at that depth. It also allows us to install the precast rings made of concrete precast segments, and that ring forms the pipe that will be there permanently after we're finished digging the tunnel. Civil engineering is a, it's a fantastic profession. Uh, it's, it really deals with engineering all of the world around us. Uh, there's infrastructure on the surface, uh, things that people see and use every day like roadways, bridges, uh, things of that nature. Uh, then there's also a tremendous amount of civil engineering below the surface that no one ever sees. And that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, in, my, in my view, that's uh, one of the best parts of civil engineering is working on the underground side, and it's, it's, it's so much fun. I never imagined I'd be able to work on something this cool, but I always had an interest in big projects. I love being a part of it. It's a great mission. We come to work every day excited to do this, and we can't wait to see the end result of all the hard work. My name's James, and I'm a civil engineer. Hurricanes can destroy entire communities that then take years to rebuild. Maggie Jakes is a civil engineer who went to Haiti to help restore clean drinking water after the hurricane. Maggie was forever changed through her experiences in Haiti, helping a desperate community and touching lives. So my junior year in college, uh, my professor did a presentation on his trip to Haiti and what he found when he was there. And their biggest problem was drinking water. They didn't have clean water to drink and thousands of people are dying each year because of this. Uh, so he was trying to get civil engineering students from Merrimack to travel there. 2011, we traveled to Haiti for the first time. Uh, we went to a town called Marmont, and this is where severe cholera outbreaks hit every year. Um, there's a big clinic there, and we saw all the cholera tents still set up from their recent outbreak. The system was damaged by the 2010 earthquake, and it was broken in a few places, but the water was relatively clean. So we made a few repairs to that, and they were just so grateful that we were there. Because we were there, we gave them hope. In the United States, we're really lucky to have access to clean water, and that's thanks to years of hardworking engineers. My experience is in Haiti, and um, my later years of college really opened my eyes to how many possibilities there really are for civil engineers to help. My name is Maggie Jakes and I'm a civil engineer. Ah, baseball. The crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd, the amazing ballparks that are home to our national pastime. Meet Aaron White, the civil engineer in charge of designing the hurricane-proof retractable roof at the Marlins Park in Florida. This is the first roof in the world that was designed for a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, it weighs roughly 7,800 tons of steel, and uh, it was actually designed to be positioned in a slightly open position for the hurricanes to let wind into the space and then back out to decrease the wind pressure on the roof. Obviously, anytime there's a threat of a rainstorm during a game, uh, you have a problem of rain delay. And if you know Miami, it rains here pretty much every day during the summer. So they have the ability to close the roof very quickly if there's an impending thunderstorm or rainstorm. So there's a guarantee that the game's going to happen every night, and that's extremely important. Uh, the mechanization is very efficient. Uh, it's designed so it only costs about $10 in electricity to move the roof open and close. So early on in the design, we tried to establish what the minimum height of the roof over the playing field actually is. So we uh, scoured the internet and found some equations that are put out uh, by NASA, I believe, for the flight of a batted ball. 
And through those equations, you can actually calculate the flight of the batted ball at all different angles of the ball leaving the bat. So if it goes straight up in the air, it goes straight horizontally, or it's some uh, nice trajectory of a line drive. And so we actually created those shapes uh, early on and put them over the playing field to make sure that the shape of the roof that was above the playing field would never uh, come in contact with the batted ball. We really interact with a lot of people. So there's a, a common conception that engineers just kind of go in the in their office and work by themselves doing calculations, but that uh, couldn't be further from the truth. I'm Aaron White, and I'm a civil engineer. Civil engineers have cool jobs. They're creative and innovative people. They make an impact and change lives, making our world a better place. The bottom line, if you want an amazing career that makes a difference, then do something real. Be a civil engineer. So I, uh, some of you I know you learned during this week, but uh, did you, like, do you know a different division of civil engineering? What's the first thing that you think or you were thinking before about civil engineering? Building and bridges. So what else? Uh, what he, so I told, I'm in the structural engineering and materials. Do you know what are the other uh, divisions or what else civil engineers do? So at least in Virginia Tech, I think we have five different divisions. It's uh, structural engineering and materials that we deal with, yeah, designing, uh, building bridges, uh, stadiums, different stuff, and also material itself. Like I work on the material level. When this material breaks, I don't deal with the whole, uh, I have two comments. Oh, you are answering here. They design road as well, correct? Yes, they design road as well. So, and also I see building and constructing. So structural and materials is one. And then, yes, we have construction engineering and management, which deals with managing and the construction procedure. And uh, even now, like smart building, virtual reality stuff to use. These are uh, some recent research that I have seen they are doing, like using virtual reality during the construction process. Uh, then transportation and traffic. So roads and pavements are part of the transportation and traffic, but they uh, work a lot like uh, airports, uh, airline traffics, and also road traffics and how we need to manage that. So it's actually a lot of uh, computer science and coding in the traffic division research that they, uh, it's going on. Uh, what else? Environmental engineering and water resources that we have. Uh, you saw the girl uh, who was working on the clean water. So this is part of the civil engineering, clean water, water resources, and uh, even air pollution and everything. Like uh, one of our professors uh, was really doing now doing research about pandemic and how this virus is uh, basically transmitted. So this is part of the civil engineering, can you believe it? And, uh, and they have a joint research, okay, this is sort of in parentheses. There is a research uh, collaboration, a professor in our environmental group and the construction and building management group. And they are working on like how the virus is transmitted and how we need to design our smart building uh, to make the probability of transmission as low as possible because we need to open the economy, right? So yeah, that was cool. I saw it on the Virginia Tech News that there is a collaboration in the civil engineering department for this. Okay, back to the divisions. So structure, uh, construction, environment, traffic, last one. Geotechnical engineering, and they deal with foundation, soils, uh, landslide, stuff like that. Uh, erosion, and there is some research that I am aware of, and they are talking about like beach vehicleability and stuff like that. 
Okay, so sort of five division, you see it's so uh, broad. Any question about this one? Good. So I have a short uh, presentation about structural engineering and talking about uh, trusses and then we will go to the app and play some game to design truss structures. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to talk about the structural engineering. I introduced myself. We watch these videos, which is about civil engineering. What is a structure? Can anyone help me with what is a structure? You can write, you can talk. Rishika, it's okay if you, uh, I don't know how long you haven't been in the group, but we talked about a different division of civil engineering. Now we are talking about the structure. I want to know what do you think when they say structure, what do you think of? They make up something that's actually good. The design of something. Not, uh, so design of a structure then will be designed, but the structure itself, the form of something, all, all true. Actually, it has a big definition, good. So, what we call as a structure, arrangement and organization of interrelated elements in a material object or system. So one more time, a structure is an arrangement and organization of interrelated elements in a material object or system or the object or system so organized. Material structures include man-made objects like uh, buildings and machines and natural objects such as biological organism, minerals, and chemicals. Even abstract structures, we have it like computer uh, science, data, or musical form, there are still some structures. So we can see here uh, some examples of these structures. Even a DNA, is, for example, is a structure. Uh, airplane, these are simple beam and then bridges. These are all structures. So it has a wide definitions. And then the structures that we encounter in civil engineering, maybe these are more like uh, classical or conventional structures that you can think of that building, bridges, stadium, and then something like water reservoir, all of these are uh, structures that we deal with in civil engineering. What is a structural engineering? Okay, without looking at this, what do you think a structural engineering is? We design structures, designing the makeup of a structure. So when we are talking about the design of the makeup of a structure, what do you mean? We want the structures to do what? The structure will stand, good. So we want the structure to be stable and there is an object for that structure, right? So we want the structure, for example, to carry load. The designing of a stable and effective structure, very good, yes. That's a very good definition. Like exactly, we want the structure to be stable and effective here, I guess, so we can say uh, it should be strong and also rigid. So structural engineering is a subdivision of civil engineering where structural engineers are trained to understand, predict and calculate stability, strength and rigidity of built structure. Then to design and understand if the structure is stable, if it is strong or not, we need to use physics law, right? And to see if this one can carry the load. If this table is stable, if it can carry the load, it's physics law, right? It's a static. And also some empirical knowledge. So we combine these two to understand the behavior and response of the material and then design it to be stable and strong. Then we use a lot of mechanics. Uh, 
which is a branch of science concerned with the behavior of physical bodies when subjected to forces or displacement. So again, you are applying a force to this table and you want to know if, it's, uh, if it moves, if it doesn't move, if it's going to be stable or not, and how much, when you are applying a force, how much deformation, for example, you will have inside this body. But mechanics is actually very fundamental. So if you go to mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, chemical engineering, biomedical engineering, definitely, you will need to learn a lot of mechanics. So it is so fundamental to lots of engineering. And then the structural materials is a branch of mechanics that studies the relationship between the external load applied to a deformable body and the intensity of internal forces inside that body. Okay, so it's the relationship between how much you apply the force and then how much is the internal or intensity of this force inside the body and then how much it deforms due to that force. Let's watch this one. So, the video doesn't have any sound, so it's not that you, you are not here. It doesn't have any. structure to collapse basically, right? You saw the examples of uh, different load on the structure. So what was those loads? Environmental disaster, very good. Yeah, like uh, so hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, earthquake, uh, when wind, all of these are environmental forces that can be applied uh, exerted on the building during the lifetime of the structure. Okay, so we want in addition to like uh, designing your structure for its uh, goal, which for example, for hospitals or schools or normal buildings is to carry our load and the furniture. And uh, for example, for a bridge, it's the goal is to carry the load of the vehicles when they are moving it. So in addition to that, we need to design the structure for this environmental, let's call them environmental loads that can be applied to the uh, buildings. Another uh, thing is, or like uh, the oil platform. So it was wave, uh, it was hurricane or tornado, but at the same time, like the, uh, the force due to those huge wave, you need to design your structure to be able to resist that load. Uh, all of, except one example, all of those were 
basically the structure was finished, people were using it and the thing happened. One example was during the construction, right? The whole building like collapsed. So one important and funny point is when you're designing your structure, it should be stable through the process, right? It shouldn't collapse when you are building it. Okay. Otherwise, it will be an embarrassing design if it uh, collapses during the construction process. So in a structural engineering, you want to analyze and design various types of structures. And the analysis means how the structure responds to different loading. So given some specific loads uh, and external environmental condition, what is happening to the structure? So you need to know the responses to design the structure. It's an iterative process. So first you need to assume some uh, columns and beams, dimension and material. Then check if you apply different forces to these columns and beams, can it carry the load? If it is a stable, it's not. If it is not, you, may, you need to change your design, make everything stronger. Sometimes your design at the start is overestimated. It's not efficient. You are actually making it weaker. So it's an iterative procedure. Can you name some type of structures? Cable bridges, bridges, yes. Planes, bridges, roads, buildings, all correct, yes. So all of those that you mentioned, again, like biggest structures, but even like some small uh, component actually can be a structure. And then we will use them within our uh, structures as well. So one is cables. Cables are, they can carry load in tension, all right? Like the simple cable, this, uh, you can, it cannot work in compression, but if you hang something from it in tension, it can carry that load. Then you will use them, for example, in suspension bridge and cable state bridges. So tensions, uh, cables are working in tension. Arches work in compression. So if your, your load be in compression, the arches can carry actually a lot of load. And this is the sort of a structure that you can see in more the historical buildings, ancient buildings. Uh, you can still see them more uh, recent, but most of the historical buildings that we see, they were using arches. So these uh, structures basically just carry compression and transfer loads in compression to the supports. They can't carry any tension, basically. Frames are these uh, usual buildings that we see everywhere. Usually they are in frame and then we, they have columns and beams. And then trusses that we are going to talk about them more today. So what is a truss? You have seen, I'm pretty sure you have seen the bridges which are made of trusses, something like this, right? These are uh, lightweight structures that can carry a load and the interesting point about them is these members are either in tension or compression. So imagine a uh, uh, spaghetti. Just try this after today's session. If you go and take one of the spaghetti uh, pasta, the very long uh, thin ones, if you pull them really in its own direction, it will not break easily. If you push them, still if you be able to ideally push it along its own direction, it's difficult to break them. But if you bend it a little bit, it will break easily. So trusses are like the members is like we use a spaghetti to make them. So they can carry load in tension and compression, but if you bend them, they will break. So you need to design the structure in a way that there is no bending in these members. 
is now a flexural load. To achieve that, you are assuming that all these uh, connections are ideal hinges. What is a hinge that if you connect this member to this one, it can rotate totally. It cannot move up and down, but it can rotate completely. We see them in a lot of places. So uh, it's a typical framing system for roofs. Do you see them in the roof of different structure? This is, we call them 2D, it's in one plane. These are 3D or a space trusses. These are some names for common roofs and basically this is the name of the person who first uh, came up with this design. You see them a lot in bridges. And again, some names of typical or a common bra uh, bridge trusses. Yeah, they are name of the people except this one, which resembles K. This is one example. And then the space the stations are uh, made of trusses a lot. You have seen pictures similar to this, I'm pretty sure. So now we are uh, going to move to the application and play with designing our own trusses. Okay. So one more time, the assumptions are members are connected at their ends to form a rigid body. Anyone knows what is a rigid body? I'm pretty sure I, uh, I think you have heard about it in your physics. We have rigid body kind of versus deformable body. So a rigid body, if you apply forces, it doesn't deform itself, but it just moves and it keeps the whole shape and everything completely. You apply the force, this just move or rotate, but it doesn't change the shape of itself. So trusses are rigid body. If you apply the force, this whole truss, for example, it can move, but you shouldn't see the form, like the shape of it to be different. Uh, all the joints are ideal pins or hinges. So any members going into that joint, it can rotate here freely. All the forces must apply to joints. That's the only way that you can have tension and compression in the members and no bending. So all your forces must be applied only to the joints. And all members are straight and slender and they should be under tension or compression. Okay. So now get a, first before going to the application, maybe get a pen, cell pen and a paper and draw the smallest truss which is a stable and let me know what is the smallest truss that you can come up with and it is a stable so what is a stable again it's a rigid body that itself if you apply the load it can move but it doesn't deform so anyone what is what any body what is the smallest one the least number of elements that you can assemble to have a stable truss. A triangle, yes, exactly. Thank you. So a triangle is like the smallest number that you can assemble basically to have a stable truss, which we call it a the simple truss element. So if you put three, this is a stable. If you put four, you can see that. If we apply the load here, it will totally collapse. So that's usually our fundamental or the element that we start designing our trusses with. So if you keep adding two members, which makes another triangle, most probably your truss is a stable. So if you keep adding 
one joint, two member, or adding these triangles, the truss e will be, again, most probably it will be stable. There can be cases like this that you still have a square rectangular here, but because it's in the combination of lots of other uh, triangles, this still is stable. Now for this one. Can you tell me if this is a stable or not? So it's, for example, it's a bridge and A and F are on the two sides of a valley. They are completely supported and the vehicle starts uh, moving here. It's unstable, Maya and Grace, yes. So Karina, correct, very good. You have this rectangular here. If your vehicle arrives here and apply the load at B, what will happen? This will totally collapse. So we need to add this DE to make the truss stable. And then the last one, this is a stable, this is actually over designed. We have other members as well, the other cross members. Okay. So, any questions? So let's go to the application. Uh, open the application and go to challenges. So the application is basically to play around and design different trusses. And there are some assumptions in it. Some is completely similar to what we talked about. Those are the fundamental assumptions about any trusses. It should be rigid body. Uh, the members are in tension and compression. Your hinges are, I, uh, joints are ideal hinges that the members can totally freely rotate in that joint. The application here assume that the material has is elastoplastic. What is it? So do you, stress a strain or let's call this force displacement, okay? Force displacement is at the start linear, like a, you have seen it in springs. You apply the load, it will deform and it is linear. There is a linear portion and then the response gets nonlinear and at some point it will break. So if you pull a spring long enough, it will break at some point, right? So what is uh, the application is considering is the break here due to tension. So when you are applying, again, through your spaghetti, if you get it and really pull it in, along its direction, it will not break. Go and try it, okay? It's, it doesn't break easily. So this point is actually far, you need to apply a lot of load to uh, spaghetti. But if you apply compression, what will happen? If you apply compression to the spaghetti at some point, like it is compression, compression, and it snaps and break. That's a snapping, we call it buckling. Have you heard about buckling before? So that uh, phenomenon that if you apply compression, at some point it gets unstable and snap, that calls buckling. So we'll see that in the application as well. Um, Maya, so I had uh, asked the seed Virginia Tech before to let you all know to apply trust me application. You can do it very fast. So it is trust me. You can uh, install it. It's free on your phone, tablet, anything. Yeah. Okay. So now please go to the first challenge and we want to design, optimize the truss to carry this load. So you can add members by using uh, this button here and then you can make it thicker or thinner using these two. So we want to design optimized. So the thinnest possible, which can carry this load uh, without buckling or breaking. So I played a video of this one, maybe just to get familiar. 
So you can choose this and then connect the members basically. So this one, for example, like got the score 200, which is only one bolt. You can basically get uh, three bolts is the maximum score that you can get. So we want the structure mass to be minimum and at the same time be able to carry this weight. So you can still play around with it, for example, by reducing the thickness. to get the optimized uh, design. Okay. So for this one, the most optimized that I could get is your structure mass is uh, 3.1 uh, kilogram, and then the score is 799. Okay, if you played around with it and see what is the thing we can go to the second example, second challenge. This one was sort of easy, right? And you can say these two members are in tension or compression. So you know these two are in tension, right? The weight is pulling it down. Should we go to the second one? So this is second challenge, start designing this one. So the weight is this time on top. Tell me your score or what is the minimum structure mass that you can get while the structure is stable and also strong enough to carry that load. So anyone, what is the minimum structure mass? 12.5, anyone less than that, 12.5? Okay, so everyone has 12.5, nice. Okay, so what do you have? Can you make it thinner or it doesn't work? Yes. So what is happening? It buckles, yes, that's the buckling. You have both members under compression with a load, it will snap or buckle, okay? Good, so third challenge. Oh, I have, okay, so that was just using two members. So basically you can use uh, more members. You can add with this button, here you can, uh, with the bottom here, you can add a joint and then add other members. So let's try with that and then see now what is, uh, can we design something more efficient than 12.5? So what is it, what do you have? I have 9.3 with this uh, design. Any other design which makes it uh, more efficient or even the same design and still reducing the cross sections? So if you have other designs, uh, show it to me because there's uh, always more than one solution. And that's the interesting thing about any uh, engineering design, you can come up with different sort of solution. And then for example, in a company or industry, you basically go with your design to the meeting and you need to defend uh, your design that this is the most efficient, the best one. So any other shape or the structure mass less than this? Okay, Ali is telling that if we move the middle bar up, we can go uh, uh, lower to 8.6. So if this one goes up, 
Nice, good. So these are the stuff that you can play with. But uh, she is suggesting, she's telling that if you move this one up, uh, we'll get more efficient. So mine is not in the middle. You can sort of guess. The member is breaking under compression. What do we want to do is making its length uh, shorter. Where is the most efficient uh, place to put the joint? Sort of in the middle, right? So we'll have both equal, so you can get uh, both of the cross sections reducing and decreasing that. Going to the third one. So I'll uh, we'll not talk about this one. So we'll see the difference. And you tell me what is the difference between this one and the very first example. One side moves, Shannon. Yes, thank you. So you see here, there are some wheels under this. So if you just put the two members, like the example one, this will move in this direction. So you need another third member to stop the, we call this roller, to stop the roller from moving. So what is the efficient design for this one? And also I want to mention that this is not just civil engineering and bridges or roofs, right? For example, if you are in mechanical engineering and you are in the team, robotic team designing your robot, which, so basically this, your supports will move, but you will have a structure on top of it to carry something and that need to be stable and carry the load. So these fundamentals, you will see them in a lot of engineering, in aerospace, mechanical, civil engineering. So here in this case, that this simple one, I'm not telling this is the final design. You are going to tell me what is the final design, but here. So I have the weight here and these two members and this one. So these two members are in tension or compression, you can unmute, talk, you can write. So I want to know these two uh, bottom members, these are, will they be in tension or they are in compression? They are in tension, definitely. So these two are in tension. What about this one? So the member which, connect the two supports, is it in tension or is it in compression? Compression, yes, correct, right? So the weight is pulling these two down, which causes, it kind of pulls this roller and makes this member to be in compression, right? So it's always good to think about it uh, before designing, so when it is in compression, then you are immediately, oh, I need to think about buckling. So maybe I should add a joint in the middle of that to make it shorter because it's under compression and it probably will buckle uh, easily, right? So what's, uh, what's the efficient design? What's the structure mass that you get for this one? Right, it buckled, correct? This is what we talked about. That one is under compression. You push it, it will snap. So in reality, it doesn't like do this total uh, kink. It's sort of, uh, it bends and then break from the middle. Depends on different material, but roughly it is like this. So what did you design? You can show me basically with your phone. So we can make this one a stronger. Nice, okay, how much is the mass? Can all of you see? That was interesting. What is the structure mass that you get? 
11.3. Good, nice. Uh, check if you can reduce still some, uh, some of the cross-sectional area. Any other design? So all of you saw that one was, uh, one, it, you had four triangle, right? Or it was five triangles. Four, okay. She had a joint here, here, and here. So you can make this one a stronger, but probably will not get to an efficient design. Like I made that a stronger and 22.5 is there. So this is basically what I did. And it's 8.8. .8. And you know what is why sort of this is really efficient? Again, because what we talked about, like these are intention. Intention, the material can carry a lot of load usually, and it breaks later. This one was the issue here. So you make it shorter and shorter with adding more hinges. Anything uh, lower than that 8.8? .8? No? If you finish with this one, go to challenge four. Let's uh, play the fourth one and then finish. So this one, we have the support, which is a hinge and hinge you can rotate, but this one doesn't move. And then we have a roller that the member can rotate, but this one move as well. So you should think about it. It's good always to think before designing, like which member is in tension, which one is in compression. So not a good design or it's, it can be much more efficient than this. So which members are in compression now? The top two are in compression. Yes, correct. What about the, thank you, Shannon, Grace. What about this one? Correct, it's in tension. So the load is pushing it, right? This load is pushing down these two, so it kind of want to push this roller out, which pulls that member, all right? If you have any question, feel free to ask. So now you know which one is in tension, which one is in compression, you know where you want to add joints, makes the, make the element shorter. So what do you have? What's the best structure mass that you get? Okay, I'm playing with the same, this challenge for, and all my structures are collapsing, so. I know I did it before, but now I can't remember what did I do. I got one with 20.6, can I see? Where is Shannon? I don't have everyone in the list. Let me first find. Oh, that's uh, a complicated one, but very nice. I think, yeah, this is, this is close to the solution, guys. Nice. And do you know what is happening? Can you explain your design as well? That why that one is a good one? Um, well, okay, so I want to say I don't have much experience with like bridges or like any of this. So when I'm looking at it, it looks like a lot of the like compression isn't on all of the different 
um, because there's only certain red areas. So it seems like it's distributing them to the bottom two, which are still pushing out the, Mm -hmm. the rolling hinge. And then everything else is kind of supporting all of them going around. So that's the only thing that makes sense to me. But yeah, nice. And also I'll add something. It is, do you see the form? Is it, it similar to the compression arches? So you're making a very, very short member so they don't buckle and then they can transfer everything under compression. So Abigail is telling 17.5. Can we see that? Oh, yeah, I just did the same thing except I just shortened the bottom one. Oh, so this is just, uh, and this is giving 17.5. Yeah. It's a simple design, interesting. So I guess then Shannon, you can probably decrease your cross sections. This is nice, okay. So that was the minimum sort of cross section that you could get on the only three members. Yeah, definitely, Shannon, because I have something kind of similar because now I'm cheating actually with what I designed before. And I got it to 17.9. Yes. So what I have is similar to that design and I could get even a little bit lower. So it is difficult basically to really like a little bit of length, for example, shorter or uh, longer can make a lot of changes. In reality, you really design and you have all the details and everything. You really calculate all this stuff. But here is just the shape of the design. It's still interesting. And always uh, look and see. It's a very good practice. Like when I'm teaching theory of structures to juniors, basically, uh, here, I'm always telling them, okay, like try to understand just by looking at your structures, what members are in tension, which ones are in compression. Like having that intuition of engineering intuition always helps. And you can come up with interesting designs. Okay, should we play more or maybe we should give you guys a break uh, before it's a launch, but still, if you have meet, launch meetings, you may need a break before that. So uh, you can play definitely more with challenges and they are fun, I, I think they are fun. Uh, and uh, for now, let's have some open discussion. Just any question, anything that has been left about Virginia Tech even, civil engineering, structures, anything. No question? Everything is clear? You are set which engineering you want to decide okay uh yeah if you have any question feel free to ask if not we can finish it i'll hope uh, to see you all in virginia tech in civil engineering the uh, classes that i'll teaching in the future i'll be happy to see familiar faces in the class yay Okay, uh, have fun, have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.